สวัสดีครับ Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online church service. Today we have a reason to rejoice because despite the pandemic, uh, we are still able to uh, impart the word of God through this online church, and uh, we welcome you most. And I really appreciate each and every one of you for taking time. It's the Lord's day, and uh, we give the Lord all our praises, and even. Uh, we partake His word. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. But before I share to you the word of God, let's all bow our heads and ask for God's anointing and inspiration. Father in heaven, we humbly come before the throne of Your grace today, and we worship You. We honor You, Father. We acknowledge Your Lordship in our life today, Father. As I preach Your word. And share your word to your people. I pray that your anointing be upon your servant. You'll cause my mouth to open and speak words of power and comfort and revelation and encouragement. God, I know, Lord God, that you allow this uh, online preaching, Father God, for the edification of your church, even for salvation of those who haven't known Jesus as their Lord and Savior yet. God, today we offer to you this online church service. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. You know what, brothers and sisters, since the time that you were born, our life is already filled with troubles. And the fact of the matter is, you in this life, you cannot live a life that is free from trouble. You cannot live a life that's free from conflict. In fact, David said, in the book of Psalm chapter 90, though our life is short, it's still filled with troubles. Job also attests when he said, yet man is born to trouble. So you see, wherever you are at, wherever you go in any part of the world, there are troubles everywhere. And many things that are going on that are, seem not to be right. You see, you know, there, there are tsunamis, there are earthquakes. Here in Bangkok or here in Thailand, the COVID-19 case is surging very fast. That's the reason why we have to hold an online church. And, you know, many troubles everywhere. In some parts of uh, Asia, there are rebellion going around. There, there's insurgency. There's injustice going on. There's terrorism. There are earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes. There are people that are encountering and suffering from terminal cancer. People whose loved ones have died. And, you know, even it's almost more than a year now when we had that virus and this is one really big trouble that's really had affected not only some but mo but all of us it's a universal trouble it's a universal problem and you know what it's more than a year now and it this virus had already killed 2.99 million people so there's one wrong theology that spreads now when people say if God is a loving God if God is a faithful a merciful God then why would he allow these sufferings these troubles for us to experience we need to understand that we have a gift of free will the freedom of choice the fact is if we choose to do what is wrong naturally we will suffer the consequence of that wrong decision amen but if we choose to do what is right then we will have God's blessing but it's not a guarantee that we will not face suffering in this life that's why Peter said in 1 Peter 3 17 for it's better if it's the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Moses also said, I would rather suffer with the people of God than to suffer the pleasures of sin for a season. 
This morning, I'd like to preach to you a message entitled, Why Does a Good God Allow Suffering? So let me share to you some reasons why He allows suffering. First of all, because evil exists. Because evil exists. It's obvious. It exists massively in a dominating way in our world and when we talk about evil we can we can uh, break it down into three categories you know we have natural evil we have um, moral evil or human evil and we have supernatural evil when we talk about first natural evil it's it's not personal issue but it's part of the creation in a fallen condition it's external it's temporal like you know these diseases these catastrophes these natural calamities these earthquakes volcanic eruption and currently this no not currently because it's more than a year now this coronavirus that have already claimed 2.99 million deaths but you know what that is still small compared to the 1918 influenza. You know, 1918, we call that Spanish flu. Where in for 24 months, it uh, around 100 million people died because of that Spanish flu. So this 2.99 million, it's still you know small compared to that 1918 Spanish influenza but the thing here this is this is a natural evil this is part of you know this is part of the curse that was brought to us by this sin that even the nature now is suffering from this the book of romans eight twenty two says for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now so we this is the reason why there's, you know, there's the presence or there's the existence of, uh, or why, the, why does God allow suffering is because of the existence of natural evil. Amen. That's why the world that we live in, this is a very dangerous place to live. It's a, it's a natural evil and we cannot escape from that because, you know, while we're still living here on earth, you know, we will still be experiencing this natural evil because we are living in an imperfect world that was caused by sin. Here's the second kind of evil and that is moral evil. This is internal. This is personal. When we talk about moral evil, it's spiritual. It's, we're talking about wickedness. We're talking about sin, transgression, iniquities. And this moral evil dominates the human race. It exists in every single human heart and it's a dominating and controlling force Romans 5 12 says therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned so you see because of the sin of Adam we become the recipients of that sin amen that's why death now uh, spread here not only in one man but among all men that live here on earth romans three ten, as it is written there is none righteous no not one so all the thoughts of the hearts are evil continually men are driven by lust that produce sin and death and so the world is under curse which makes natural evil everywhere present and inhabited by people who are morally evil to the core. So that's the second kind of evil, moral evil. And here's the third and last kind of category of evil. That's the supernatural evil. It's a force of demonic beings that are as old as the creation and they are corrupt by nature. They are they are called the evil spirits and these are you know these spirits are liars these spirits are deceivers 
Ephesians 6.12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So you see, we're talking here about the existence of evil, that it's not only external, it's not only internal, but this is supernatural. We're talking about beings that we do not see. Amen. Remember, in the book of Revelation, it tells us that one-third of the angels rebelled against God. One-third of the angel followed Lucifer. And they are now what we call the fallen angels. They are now what we call the principalities, the, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age. They are the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, the Bible declares that these fallen angels were thrown and kicked out of heaven. Now, they made they made their dwelling place not only in the skies, but even in the minds of the people. That's the reason why many people now are deceived. Because of this, because of this supernatural uh, evil forces that have made the minds of the people as their fortress, as their stronghold, as their dwelling place. Amen. So God sometimes allows that, as we learn from Job, like from Peter and from Paul, you know, Paul who was given uh, a messenger of Satan to keep him humble. Remember, he said, God, you know, I've been asking the Lord to take this thorn away from me for three times. But, you know, the messenger of Satan, you know, buffeted me. And that is God's way for making or keeping uh, Apostle Paul from being humble. Amen. So this is the work of this third category of evil. You know, John 10.10 10, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. So that's the function of the evil. Why do you see suffering? So we can first attribute that because of the existence not only of the natural evil not only because of the moral evil or the human evil inside of us but also because of the supernatural level it you know it all surrounds us it's outside of us it's inside of us and it's everywhere so that's the first reason why our good God would allow suffering for us to experience. The second reason why our good Lord would allow sufferings is to test your faith so you will grow spiritually. To test your faith so you will grow spiritually. This is a very basic principle on the Word of God. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Let me repeat that. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. If your faith does not survive adversities, if your faith does not survive sufferings and troubles, then your faith is not real. Because it is through adversities that our faith grows stronger. That's the real kind of faith. That's the biblical kind of faith. Sufferings, troubles, and pain show you who you really are. It's easy to say, I have faith. But that is not enough. It has to be tested to prove that your faith is really genuine. To prove that your faith can really be trusted. Because once you overcome that, then that's where you would grow. The, one of the best stories in the Bible that I really admire is the life of Job. Because Job really is one of the cast in the Bible that had encountered, you know, extreme suffering in life. But it was, you know, it was with God's permission the Bible said in the book of Job 
that uh, Job was an upright man. Job was a man of faithfulness. He was an upright man. He is a man that did not sin before the Lord. But, you know, Satan, who is also called the accuser, would come before the presence of God and would accuse Job and said, Oh, this man is only faithful to you because, you know, you, you put your head, you put your covering, your protection around him and his family and his business. Try to take away all those coverings and your protection if he will not curse you to your face. So, you know, this is one good thing about Satan. He would ask permission from the Lord before hitting us. Amen. Satan is respectful. He would not. That's why we will say God allows sufferings to happen in us because Satan would ask permission first. So that's what happened to Job. And the Bible said that Job did not sin. Job did not, you know, he did not complain. He did not doubt God. But he kept his faith on the Lord. And one, when he overcame that trial, amen, that made his faith grow. That's where his faith became mature in the Lord. If you don't have sufferings, you will never grow. Life without sufferings is like school without lessons. Have you tried going to school and, you know, you just go to school for fun, but you don't study your lesson? What would you answer if you, uh, you know, if, if, if the teacher would give his, would give the lesson? Okay, so think about your life. One of the great things you have learned in life came through hardships. They didn't happen when life was good. When the sun was shining, when the birds were singing. It's when you have nothing, when you were sick, when you were intimidated. It's when you have encountered and experienced injustice in your life. It's when you were lacking. It's when you were in danger, when you were in conflict. Amen. When you were threatened. Amen. This is where you encountered God. This is where you have really applied your faith. And when you have overcame all these sufferings and hurdles in life, that's where your faith grows. That's what the book of James says. James 1, 2-4 My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit have enlightened you. Why would our good Lord allow suffering for us to experience? And that is for our faith to grow so we can become mature. Amen. There is a saying, as the diamond shines brighter when heat pressure is applied, our faith grows and becomes strong as the sufferings and hardships are encountered. Amen. And here's the third thing. Why would God allow suffering? And that is, so God Himself will be glorified. So God Himself will be glorified. Going back to the story of Job, Job praised God instead of cursing God after all these extreme sufferings that he had experienced. He lost his livestock. He lost his children. He lost his health. He lost everything, almost everything. What's left was his wife. But his wife would even suggest to him to curse God and die. And yet, despite these things that had been happening in the life of Job, he did not curse God, yet he praised the Lord. It says in Job 1.21, And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, I pray, brothers and sisters, that we can be, we can have the spirit of Job. Amen. That whenever we are stricken by hardships and sufferings, when we continue to praise the Lord, that blows the mind of the unbelievers. Especially for us here in a nation that 
that doesn't believe God in a nation that doesn't know Jesus Christ. Whenever we are hit with adversities, I tell you what, if we keep on praising the Lord, if we keep on rejoicing despite all this pain and suffering and, you know, and, and troubles and problems brought to us by this pandemic, you know, this pandemic really had brought us trouble, I tell you what. With just one person contracted and it passes through one and it just blows, you know, it surges fastly. And even though we experience all these problems brought by pandemic, if we continue to praise the Lord, that will blow the mind of the unbeliever. Amen. You know, same story in the book of Acts chapter 16. When Paul and Silas was in prison, you know, these two disciples can hardly breathe because they've been they've been beaten. They were they were they were uh, they were struck and they were beaten. They were, you know, their bodies were filled with blood. They were hurting physically, and yet the Bible says that they were praising and singing to the Lord. Amen. You know what? We've been to uh, Cham. Uh, to uh, to comfort and you know give our moral support to the de to sister Linda because her husband uh, died last week so we were there and you know to bring comfort and uh, to to sister Linda and her family but you know what when I asked her how are you sister Linda you know what she told me she said no regrets only rejoice no regrets only rejoice hallelujah i like that that really inspired me you know we we came there to encourage her but instead she was the one encouraging us and because of that god was glorified god is pleased to see people that were hurting and yet they had no regrets they were not complaining they were not asking the lord they were not grumbling they didn't feel self-pity on the other hand they were rejoicing amen and because of that i believe that god is glorified this morning brothers and sisters maybe you are currently experiencing suffering or problem or you know trouble in your life and you begin to ask the lord why lord why did you allow me to suffer? Why did you allow me to experience this? I tell you what, God has a purpose. Amen. God has allowed it. God has either allowed it or done it. It doesn't matter. Just deal with it and seek to bring Him glory. A powerful testimony, especially if you are here in this nation, that will be a powerful testimony to a nation that doesn't know God. Here is one uh, promise of God in Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose according to his purpose brothers and sisters you know this verse is a very common verse and many people attempted to claim this promise but i tell you what this verse this promise is only for christians this promise is only for those people whose faith was put in jesus christ amen it says there to those who are the cold you might ask am i not cold i tell you what if you respond to god if you receive jesus as your lord and savior if you give your life to the lord if you commit your life to the lord meaning you are called by god amen then you can claim or you have the right to claim this promise amen the greatest bad comes the greatest good that's why, brothers and sisters, everything that happens in our life, extreme suffering, extreme pain, or whatever that is not desirable, I tell you what, God causes all these things to happen for a purpose, for a reason, and that is for your own good and my own good. Another verse in Exodus 9.14, For at this time, I will send all my plagues to your very heart and on your servants, and on your people that you may know that there is none like me in all 
the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, why do why do the why did the Hebrew people experience all these plagues and suffering in the Old Testament? So the people will realize that there is no God like our God. Amen. I believe that is really very true. Amen. So that God will be able to reveal himself that he is a God that is powerful, that he is the God that is sovereign, the supreme ruler of the universe, the God who is in full control of everything that's happening around the world. Hallelujah. So again, God allows suffering because evil exists to test your faith so you will grow spiritually and just so that God will be glorified in us. Brothers and sisters, as I close this morning, after this COVID-19, you know, we will all be praising and thanking God for all that He has done. Meanwhile, we thank Him every day for we are still alive. We thank Him every day. Amen. The, mo you know, the mere fact that you were able to wake up this morning, meaning to say that God is not yet finished in your life, that God still has a purpose, a reason why He caused you to be alive up to this very day. Amen. Any suffering, amen, rejoice. No regrets, only rejoice. Let's bow our heads today. Precious and ever-loving Father, we thank you, O God, for your words. Thank you, O Lord, that you have been our faithful Father. Thank you for your grace, your love, and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for letting us understand about the things that are happening in our world today even about the sufferings that we are currently experiencing, that some of these are because of our wrong decision and we are just reaping the consequence of the wrong decision that we made. And even though we make right decisions, we are not spared of this suffering, Father God. But you allow these things, O oh God, because you want us to grow because you want your name to be glorified. You want to reveal yourself to us. Before I end my prayer this morning, you are on the other side of this screen and it's not an accident that you are listening right now. This is God's appointed time for you to realize that God loves you so much and that He died for you and He's been knocking at the door of your heart. Will you let Jesus come into your life? Maybe you've tried many things. You resorted to many things. You know, you tried to find satisfaction and contentment in your life. You've tried almost everything, but you realized that nothing of this or no one of this had really filled in that vacuum or that emptiness in your heart. The truth of the matter is only Jesus Christ can satisfy you. Only Jesus Christ can fill in that emptiness in your life. Will you open your heart and say, I need Jesus. I want Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. I will help you in a prayer. You pause for a moment wherever you are right now. Stop what you're doing and you pray this kind of prayer. A prayer to God. I'll just lead you in a prayer. Make this prayer from your heart and say, Lord Jesus, I believe I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross because of my sins. I also believe that you rose again from the dead for me to be saved. Today, I repent of my sins. I turn away from all my sins, from all my wickedness. And I open my heart. Come in, Lord Jesus. I invite you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Wash me by your precious blood. Give me your power to live the right kind of life that you want me to be, to have. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray to each and every one of you. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done today. Thank you, Lord, for your powerful words. Thank you for all your promises. Truly, you are the God 
who is so good to us and that you truly have never left us nor have forsaken us. Thank you, Father God, for your words that have corrected us, that have enlightened us, and even have rebuked us, O oh God, from our wrong conception of the things, that, of the sufferings that we are currently experiencing. Forgive us, Lord, of all our doubts and unbelief. We renounce them in the name of Jesus. Right now, I plead the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, from wrong mentality. From now on, Lord, by your grace, we shall continue to put our trust in you. We shall believe in you, Father, O oh God, that everything happens in our life happens for a reason, happens for a purpose, O oh God. It's because that you love us. We, you want us to grow more, to mature, to be complete, O oh Lord God. Father in heaven, I pray that don't allow the enemy to steal away what your children have received from your word this morning. I release your blessing to your people right now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Sawadee ka.